Hello all, welcome back to this new module. In this module, we are going to learn about OWASP Mobile Top 10. Now before learning about OWASP Mobile Top 10, let's understand what exactly is OWASP, why is OWASP important, why one should follow OWASP, OWASP Mobile Top 10 2014, OWASP Mobile Top 10 2016, and then we are going to learn about some key differences between these two versions of OWASP the 2014 one and the 2016 one. So let's start with what exactly is OWASP. OWASP, the full form of OWASP is Open Worldwide Application Security Project. It is a non-profit foundation that works to improve the security of software. So what exactly does OWASP do? OWASP basically will give you a brief understanding about all the security issues that can be found into an application. Now the application does not mean the only the web application but it also includes APIs, Web3 applications that are built on blockchain, cloud, mobile applications be it Android or iOS, uh, web applications, desktop applications, all sorts of applications. Why is OWASP important? OWASP is important because it categorizes the vulnerabilities into, a, into certain groups and these groups of vulnerabilities it categorizes into a sequential format from 1 to 10 wherein the vulnerability number 1 is the one which is most commonly found. Now if you have been into web application testing you might be knowing that there is a recent list which has come out that is OWASP web application testing 2021 the very recent one is 2021 wherein it has categorized from a1 till a10 there are 10 vulnerabilities which are categorized these are the top 10 vulnerabilities which were found back from 2017 till 2021 so what OWASP does is OWASP categorizes or creates a particular list wherein the top vulnerabilities that are commonly found be it for web be it for mobile APIs those are listed from A1 till A10. Now, why should one follow OWASP? Well, one should follow OWASP because OWASP's top 10 or OWASP is going to help you and your organization to mitigate risk as well as conduct threat modeling or architectural threat analysis. And hence, it is important for your organization and it is important to build a security expertise for your organization. Now let's talk about mobile. So OWASP top 10 as it has categorized for web applications, it has also categorized for mobile applications. There were two versions of OWASP that came into picture. The very first one was back in 2014 and the second one was in 2016. So that's what we called as OWASP mobile top 10 2014 and OWASP mobile top 10 2016. And the 2016 version is the very latest one. After the 2016 version, there was no such version as of this video being recorded. So let's quickly jump on to what was OWASP Top 10 2014 and what was OWASP Top 10 2016. And let's understand them one by one. And let's understand what are the key differences between them. So let me just pull up the slide. And over here, as you can see, I've listed down OWASP 2014. 14 version and the OWASP 2016 version and these arrow marks basically show you what is the difference between them. So let's go through OWASP Top 10 2016 because that is the very recent one and one should understand that. So for mobile applications the notation is something different. It's not categorized as A. For mobile applications it is categorized as M. So you will be finding M1, M2, M3 up till M10. So the very first one is called as improper platform usage, which basically means that the platform of the application was not properly used. M2 stands for insecure data storage, wherein whatever data was being stored by the application is stored in an insecure format. M3 is insecure communication, wherein whatever communication is happening between the client application, the client mobile application and the web server or the application server at the backend is in an insecure format. M4 is insecure authentication wherein authentication mechanisms are very much insecure. 
MFI, as the name suggests, in, insufficient cryptography. The cryptography methods are insufficient or lacking best practices. M6, insecure authorization, just like we have IDOS and access control issues inside web application. Similarly, over here, it's called as insecure authorization, wherein we have authorization issues. M7, client code quality, which basically means the quality of the source code of the mobile application is not proper. M8 is code tampering, wherein the mobile application's code can easily be tempered. M9, reverse engineering, the mobile application, uh, the mobile application can be reverse engineered to find the source code and find other sensitive details from the source code. M10, external functionality, wherein certain functionalities which are not required are still inserted. So this was a complete list for OWAS Mobile Top 10 2016. Now let's check out what are the changes between OWAS Top 10 2014 and 2016. So, M1 was weak server side controls. This was replaced by improper platform usage. Insecure data storage still remains the same. Insufficient transport layer protection. The name has been changed to insecure communication. Unintended data leakage has been merged with insecure data storage in 2016. Poor authorization and authentication. Now, in 2014, authorization and authentication were categorized inside one. But these issues became quite often. So these were split up in 2016 to become insecure authorization and insecure authentication respectively. So uh, poor authorization and authentication was split into two. You have broken cryptography, which took its place from M6 to M5 to create insufficient cryptography. The name has been changed again. Client side injection, the name has been changed to code tampering and it's lost its place from M7 and went to M8. You then have security decisions via untrusted inputs. Uh, well, this particular category was not present in 2016. So there's a high chance that security, security decisions via untrusted inputs have been reduced by the time it came to 2016. Improper session handling has been merged with insecure authentication and lack of binary protections has been merged with reverse engineering. So this is for OWASP top 10 2014, the differences between 2014 and 2016. Well, to remember OWASP top 10 2016 should be onto your fingertips. So if any person asks you that I have found this particular vulnerability, under which category should I categorize it? You should be able to answer that you have to categorize this into this particular category. So all of the topics or all of the categories should be onto your fingertips. If someone asks you what is the position of insecure authentication in an instance, you should be able to answer that it is M4. In the next upcoming videos, what I'm going to do is I will be taking each of the category and I'm going to explain in a bit depth with proper examples. So yeah, that's it for this particular video. And I hope you are enjoying this journey of iOS pen testing and you're learning a lot. So see you in the next video. Thank you.